We are at the Packing Coconut Collection, Migrating Object is the exhibition that opens now. Ellen McGrain is uh, one of the curators of this uh, exhibition that shows a lot of objects. Of, uh, this is the problem. Are they objects? Are they sculptures? Are they works of art? Together with the influence that all these job with each had on the contemporary art or the modern art and the collection that Peggy Guggenheim had. So how did this uh, exhibition start? So the exhibition started with looking very closely at the um, cultural origin and cultural meanings of the objects in Peggy Guggenheim's collection. So with this piece, um, which is by an unrecorded Baga artist from Guinea, um, it's called a Dumba, it's a headdress. It would have been worn over the shoulders um, in a masquerade and as an abstraction of a feminine ideal. So first and foremost, we wanted to make sure that our attributions were right, that the original context of these pieces, what they meant for their makers and users in Africa came through. But then the other story we wanted to tell is how Peggy Guggenheim saw relationships between these objects and the European artists she collected. So this gallery, is actually based and inspired by a pairing that Peggy Guggenheim did. In the photograph from 1960, we see her posing this Baga headdress right in front of Picasso's the studio in 1928. Probably knowing full well that Picasso was inspired by this complex language of abstraction. And in fact, we know that by 1928, Picasso owned a, a Baga uh, headdress just like this, which is now in the Musée uh, Picasso in Paris. So her taste and the connections that she was making between the arts of Europe and the arts of Africa was very much part of a much longer history of artists of the early, early part of the 20th century appropriating and borrowing ideas for their abstraction. So the exhibition is really an attempt to tell multiple stories. The stories about the original context of the objects, but then how once they migrated to Europe, how those meanings shifted and changed, and in many cases were thought of in entirely new and different ways. And one of the exhibition's point is about the objects. If we can call them art, if we can call them sculptures, because taken off of the context where they were made of, and four, the misunderstanding or the non-understanding of the object in the European and American world yes. was different. Yes, so for that question, we might as well come over here and look at this other um, sculpture that was uh, made by an artist from Gabon, um, by an unrecorded Kota artist. It's a reliquary figure, and clearly, we are seeing this object in a context that was not meant to be. We are not meant to be looking at these objects on a pedestal in a white cube gallery space. Originally, this was a reliquary figure that would have been attached by this lozenge shape here at the base to a basket that held the remains of an ancestor. So we are looking at the object in a way that goes against the original intentions of the maker and the original community for which it was made um, in Gabon. But that's a fact. Anytime we see works of art um, in galleries now that came from uh, places in Africa, they weren't meant to be seen in the space of the gallery. And so that recontextualization is a historical fact. And so now the question is, what do we do with it? And so one um, very potent reminder of the misunderstandings that took place because of seeing objects out of their context was this lozenge-shaped base, which is a, uh, a clue to its original function. Um, many Europeans, Picasso included, read that as an abstraction of a figure of arms and legs. And so we see Picasso for example, in a 1908 painting, soon after he probably acquired one of his Coda reliquaries, basing the figure of a dancer on this abstract anatomy and reading though that lozenge as arm and limbs. So um, restoring the original context is very important, but I think it's also important to remind people of the ways in which um, sort of learning about 
about uh, objects from other cultures uh, oftentimes are, are based on misunderstandings and projections and reflect your own values of what you want to see in the work. So we're trying as much as we can to keep in mind those multiple stories. Thank you.